Hello and welcome back to Magical Diary. <clears throat> In order to leave this dungeon, you must find the key. Only that key will open the doors. Think before you act. With those words, the voice fades away. Okay, so let's let's go west. Okay, so I'm assuming that's the door I need to get through. There's a manus in this room. Whatever that is. Examine it. Smoke's taunting at you. Okay, well, let's just try. So he's just hovering in front of me. So that was an illusion. Anything east of here? Nope. South. Okay, so we have a rock to the south. And we have a chest. Okay. Um, I have a feeling opening it's a bad idea. Okay, so there's... Hmm. So there doesn't appear to be anything here. There's a chest here. Heavy chest bound with thick bands of dull grey metal. I don't want to try and open it because I suspect that would suck. Let's examine the sphere. A round ball of stone. So it's a rock. Just a very, very spherical rock. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. What if we try and use the rock to open the box? Because I'm assuming the key's probably in the box. Or the key might be in the... Fear. Okay, no illusions on it. So let's use teleportation on the sphere. Move it to there. Teleport the sphere. Okay, and then let's use push object on the sphere. Push it. Hear a distant explosion. Ah, siesta. Pile of rocks. Let's examine the chest. Okay, so I'm assuming it had a booby trap which I've just triggered. So now can I remove the lid? Okay, let's examine the chest. Peer into the chest. And there's the key. Haha! -ha. Gotcha. And we can now get out of here. I unlock the doors and pass through. Whew, that went well. I emerged from the dungeon, blinking into sunlight. Congratulations, Jandlin. For succeeding in your quest, you receive five merits. And another five merits for managing to see through our little trick. I hope you enjoyed putting your skills into practice. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have another student to look after. Wait, what is it? What's happening with Virginia? She'll be all right. She should be back with you tomorrow. Okay. I guess I can go relax now. Yeah, so that went pretty well. Hmm. Ellen and I have completed our exams and return to our room when we hear a knock on the door. Hey kids. I heard you were asking about V. That's right, how is she? She'll be fine. Look. Can I come in? Sure. I rush back into the room and look quickly around to be sure everything embarrassing is out of sight. Ellen's part of the room, of course, is immaculate already. William ducks his head slightly as he walks into the room, even though I'm sure our ceilings are the same height as the ones in the senior rooms. Maybe he's keeping an eye out for one of Donald's traps. Thanks, I just... I figured those some things V would rather not everyone hear about. There are things you should know. What is it? My sister was born premature, and as a baby she had a lot of problems. I don't remember much, I was young, but I remember at least once being rushed to the hospital in the middle of the night. Hospital, but... 
you guys have magic? Couldn't you just heal her? I don't know much about babies, but apparently it's not that easy. Babies aren't people yet, and the same spells don't work on them. So there's something wrong with Virginia. Don't let her hear you say that. Most of the time she's fine, just like anyone else, but certain kinds of bugs she's more likely to catch, and when she does, they're more likely to be serious. So keep an eye on her, okay? Especially if there's a cold going around. What do we need to do for her now? Nothing. A little green magic and some rest and she's back to normal. Really, it's not such a big deal. V's not exactly delicate. Thanks for letting us know. On Saturday morning, Mel and Alance is delivered. Shortly afterwards, the door opens and Virginia comes running in. Hey guys! She grabs something from her desk. Can't talk, gotta go. What's going on? I have to do detention today because I missed yesterday's exam. Oh, too bad. Better hurry so you don't get into more trouble. Yeah, see you later. So what should I do today? Eh. Mm, I don't think I can afford anything good at the mall yet, because I'm going to save up and... Actually, I want to save up and get that wand, don't I, which was plus five. So I think I might spend the entire day, the entire week doing green magic. Because that was the other one I was contemplating studying. And I want to study alone. Smart to stress. So next week. What should I do this week? So yes, it, it'll take two or three more weeks to get enough for that wand, because I wanted the one that was fifty dollars. That was plus five to every kind of magic. So that'll bring me to ninety-five and ninety-four. At which point I'll do the last couple of classes of red and blue to max them out. So in the meantime, let's do boatloads of uh, green magic. Hello, my rosy-faced lovebirds. Please take your seats. Before we go on with classwork today, there's some important things that we need to discuss. For many people, this is a sensitive subject. However, you are all young adults now, not children, so it's better for us to have this out in the open. Wait, is this going to be sex education? This is the traditional season for young romance, and we don't want to clip your wings. There are no school rules against love in any form. Whoa, I guess it is. Sort of. As long as you and the other person, or people, that you are uh, with are enthusiastic about whatever you're doing, we will not intervene. But keep an eye on any naughty business out of areas where those who have not consented might accidentally see you. And try not to get too distracted from your schoolwork. Know what you want, and be sure everyone else does too. If anyone isn't enthusiastic, whether it's a kiss or a dance or something else, stop and wait. Now. There is one other matter that would require punishment. As students, you are not allowed to carry children. Breaking this rule will result in equal punishment for all parties concerned, and we will know who you are. Trusting your partner is an important part of romance, but in this case, take your own precautions as well. If you don't think your green magic is up to the task, or you have any further questions, please come and talk to me after class. Now, let's get back to magic. Well, that was weird. Mm. The Valentine's Day order booths are set up around the quad, with two tables for each class, manned by student officers. Minnie and Jacob are in charge of the freshman class sales. Valentine deliveries are $5 each and include a card, and either a bit of candy or a trinket, for those poor souls allergic to chocolate or something. Jacob's line is moving more slowly for some reason. He keeps getting distracted and staring at Minnie. I wonder what's going on there. There are so many people swirling around, it's impossible to keep track of who's where and doing what. I wonder if anyone's buying a valentine for me. Oh, should I be mean and order one for uh, Helen? Well, depends if you count that as mean. Hmm. Oh, come How sad have you got to be to send a valentine to yourself? I mean, don't get me wrong, I know there are people who do it, and I understand feeling lonely and depressed, but... Surely that just makes it feel worse. And who, seriously, who would sell send a Valentine to one of the teachers? Should it be? Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. this could lead to a very awkward conversation, but I'm gonna go for it. Okay, I'll write that down. I'm done. Green magic. Diagnosis. Some of the current state of a living target and locate elements. Yeah, cool. 
trace creatures of recent past their area. Potentially useful. Heal. Excellent. Please, kids and club, take your seat. There are some things we should talk about before your magical education progresses any further. Most of you know yourselves as either a boy or a girl, and that identity may be important to you. Wait, is this going to be sex education? But even with humans, sex is not always as simple as male or female, with nothing in between. And in the magical world, there are many more possibilities of which you should be aware and respectful. Guess not. Some entities are sexless and will be confused if you address them by masculine or feminine terms. Some can change gender roles at will or be both at once. Some beings have more than two sexes. All of which can be difficult for the English language to cope with. Many living beings will take offence at being referred to as it, although not all. It is wise to ask those to how you meet how they prefer to be addressed. To make things easier, we witches and wizards have our own special pronouns to use when gender is unknown. Repeat after me. E. M. Ear, ears, himself. I mutter, I mutter the strange syllables along with the other students, feeling a bit confused. Here's a way to remember. Someone with enough magic can say whatever he wants. On Friday morning, the Valentines are delivered. Ellen sent me a card, a box of candy hearts with silly Valentine sayings on them. Ellen picks up the Valentine I sent her and immediately blushes, then looks away. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Janlin, can we talk? What's up? This... This Valentine you sent me, do, do you know what it says? Not exactly. I mean, I, I didn't get to pick the exact words. Maybe you should read it. She hands me a card. <coughs> okay, I'm going to take this next bit completely and utterly seriously. <laughs> to my dear one, in dreams and in love, nothing is impossible. Yours, Janling. Whoa. Did you mean it? <laughs> yeah, I like that. Declare friendship, confess love, panic. I... I want to protect you. I, I liked holding on to you when you were frightened. I like it when you smile and I, I hate it when you're sad. So, I guess maybe I kind of like you. But do you love me? What is love? A place where nothing is impossible? Does that mean... I like you, but... We can't do this right now. We're roommates and, and, and Virginia... We can't. Ask me again at the end of the year. Ask me at the May Day Ball. I... I need to go wash my hands. She hurries out of the room, and I take a seat on my bed, trying to pretend my hands aren't shaking. See, I took that seriously. I resisted the urge to break out into a chorus of what is love. <clears throat> On Saturday morning, the mail and allowances are delivered. What should I do today? Have I still only got 35? I should have 40 now. Hmm. Study. Fair enough. Guys, do you smell smoke? Bonfire. What bonfire? For the New Year's ceremony tomorrow night, they used the ashes. Ellen and I pushed close to the window to try and get a look outside. It's hard to tell, but I think I can see Minnie and Jacob near the flames. I suppose we'll find out more tomorrow. Okay, da 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 da, -da. next week. In the evening, we are all summoned from our dorms by figures wearing hoods and masks who lead us outside. We sit on the ground in groups, by hall. Horses with horses, wolves with wolves, and so on. Then the seniors from each hall stand and form a line leading up to the remains of the bonfire, where Professor Potsdam is waiting. One at a time, they take a long wooden stick and stir through the remains of the ashes. The old year has died, the past is gone, and will not come again. Let us leave behind our sorrows in the ashes of the past. As these ashes become soil, so may our hearts become the ground of the future. After all the seniors have had their turn and taken their seats again, Minnie and the other class presidents bring new wood and place on top of the old. Let the new year be born! The pile of wood glows with tiny sparks. 
four, eight, twelve, until at last curls of orange flame begin to blossom and the fire is rekindled. We need an omen for the new year. If anyone here has been experiencing a recurring dream and would like to share it with us. I glance at Ellen, but she shakes her head. Either her dreams don't repeat, or she doesn't want to talk about them. At first there is silence, except for the muffled squeak from where the snake girls are sitting. Looks like Barbara was not too keen on having Suki share her dreams. Eventually, Angela stands up and tells us a dream about a pink birthday cake sitting in a field of cows. She takes, she takes the cake and runs away from the cows, but when she cuts into the cake, it's made of sand and it collapses. Meditate on this dream and what meaning it might have for your lives in the new year. It means I shouldn't eat cake with Angela. And may the seeds of the past bear fruit in you all. After she finishes speaking, everyone stands up and dances in the light of the new fire until it's time to go to our rooms and sleep. What should I do this week? More green magic? Or maybe I should have done some black magic. Mm, nah, I'd stick with green. Green magic and one stress. One green magic and one stress. Learned a new spell. Cool. See, I suspect if you focus exclusively on one of them, you can probably really sort of uh, whack it up pretty fast. Sicken. Ooh, cool. Dorm room. On Saturday morning, mail and allowances are delivered. What should I do today? I should study. The library is fairly quiet, but familiar faces are still present. Eh, study with Minnie. Helps me out with my black magic. It's a pity you can't ask her to help you with a specific one, rather than having to, you know, just go for the weakest one, but that's okay. Okay, next week. What should I do this week? Well, let's start by having a day off to knock the stress back down to zero, and then focus on our green magic some more. Stress. After classes, all the students are called together in the gym. There's a table on the stage containing a row of brightly coloured candles, of which only one at the end is lit. Today we are here to recognise outstanding Iris Academy seniors, the best and brightest of our young people, with induction into the Magical Honour Society. But what you should be most proud of is not the honour you received today, but the choices and the sacrifices you have made that led you to this point, and to points beyond. A life well lived is its own reward. As seniors, you stand as a shining example to all those who will follow you. Therefore, as I call your names, please come up to the stage and take one of these candles to pass on the light. She lists off a number of seniors. William and Isabel are among them, but Damien is not. Each takes the candle that has been most recently lit and touches it to the next candle in line, passing the flame. And one more student who deserves special recognition for her hard work and creative thinking in proposing a new theory behind the Icarus effect, Angela Kirsch. Angela walks up to the stage and smiles, and I hear Ellen grinding her teeth behind me. I wonder what's on her mind. Each one of you has a calling in life. You set your own goals and strive to achieve them. Your goals are not yours alone, and what is easy for you may not be for others. Whatever you do, never crush someone else's dream, for then you can be sure that you are not working towards your own. After that speech, we are dismissed, with candles still burning. Excellent, three green magic. One green magic. I come back into the room to find Ellen turning the place upside down. She has books piled on top of books, half of them still open. It's a mess. Ellen is making a mess. What's going on? It's so stupid. What is? Do you know what her paper was about? What paper? Angela. Is this about that honor society thing? She came up with this idea that there's a magical field around the earth and it gets weaker as you move further away from the ground. So if you fly high enough, the magic fails and you fall. That sounds like a reasonable idea. But it's just an idea. All she did was read about people flying and then make something up. She wrote an essay on how things might be, and she didn't do anything to find out at all if it was true. They're calling her brilliant for nothing but a just-so story. Um, 
Well, I guess that's bad. I asked Professor Potsma about it, and she didn't even understand the question. And I told Professor Grabner it was bad practice, and he snapped at me. How can we learn magic from people who don't actually know how magic works? If nobody does any research, nobody tries to figure out what makes things happen, anything we do could lead to a disaster. Well, can you do research? What? I'm not sure I understand the problem either, but it sounds like you do. So maybe you should do something. Maybe. She goes back to flipping through books, but she looks less angry and more thoughtful. So yeah, she wants to apply the scientific method to magic, which, yeah, makes complete sense. Cool. Okay. What should I do today? Yes, I'll go with you. Sure. Nice to have some company. When we reach the mall, Ellen immediately heads not in the direction of the bookstore, but to an unimpressive, generic-looking drugstore. What are you looking for? A camera. But we're not allowed... She looks at me. Right, you know that. Maybe you should go and let me shop on my own, then you can say you didn't know. Why do you want a camera, anyway? I'm not telling. Go on, I'll see you later. Huh. Well, what should I do today, then? Mm -hmm. Oh, let's just do some window shopping. I wander in and out of various stores. It's not a very big mall, but there are books, clothes, music and toys, so I keep myself entertained for a few hours. A little bit of decreasing stress, that's good. So yes, one more week and I should have enough money to go back to the mall, get the wand, at which point I can then revert to finishing off my studies in red and blue magic, and then I can focus everything exclusively into green. What should I do this week? Green, green. Let's have a day off at the end of the week. Excellent. When I come into the room, I nearly trip over Ellen. Why are you sitting on the floor? She stands up and tugs her cape and robe into proper position. Close-ups. Oh, you got the camera. Wait, what are you taking pictures of? I suppose she could be taking pictures of herself sitting on the floor, but why? That ball. That's one of the phone balls from the gym. You took it? I borrowed it. And why is it purple? Because I'm testing. I'm using blue magic to change the colour and taking pictures to see if the camera records the ball's original colour or the illusion colour. Oh. Well, does it? It's a disposable camera, so I can't see the results until I get it processed. So I have to do as many tests as I can think of first. Wanna help? Okay, I guess. What should I do? Do you know the cloak spell? Sure. Then stand where the ball is and make yourself invisible and I'll take your picture. Okay. I can hear the camera click before I've even cast my spell, but I guess that makes sense if she's trying to capture the process. I can't resist making silly faces at her once I know that she can't see me. I wonder if any of them will come out. After the spell wears off, Ellen and I talk about other things we could photograph. It's not safe to cast a fire spell in the bedroom, but there are a few other things we can try. So we're batting the ball around with push spells and giggling and trying to take pictures at the same time when Virginia walks in. What are you guys doing? Experiments? You've got a camera! You're taking pictures in here? Oh, you're gonna get into so much trouble. I... I'm not hurting anything. You won't tell, will you? Come on, we're friends, it's just for fun. I guess, but you really shouldn't. Ellen puts the camera away, and I subtly kick the borrowed ball under the bed. We can take it back later. Yeah, she's applying the scientific method, and as a scientifically minded guy, I completely approve. In the evening, all the freshmen and sophomores are summoned to the gymnasium, where two rows of long tables have been put in place for a pancake supper. We line up, girls on the left, boys on the right, and file in to take our seats. The glasses and silverware are already in place, but no plates. One by one, people get up and walk to the stage, where the kitchen staff are handing out pancakes and syrup. Then they tick out those plates, but not back to their own seats. Boys carry plates to the girls, and girls carry plates to the boys. I'm near the end of my table, so most people already have food before it's my turn to carry any. I end up giving my plate to Manuel. It's a strange way of going about things, but everyone gets fed in the end. Two green magic, two stress. Green magic, not stress. 
so that you can reduce your stress, good. On Saturday morning, the mail and allowance is delivered. What should I do today? Let's go to the mall. Today. Magic store. Okay, I want the star wand, I think. Can I just... I, I want to know what the furry set does. Strength plus 5, green magic plus 25. No thanks. How much... I mean, you would have to buy basically nothing else if you wanted to get, you know, any of these three. Any of these four, pretty much. You know, unless you start getting a lot more money later, but... Uh, yes, the star wand. This adorable fairy governor. So yeah, red plus 5, blue plus 5, green plus 5, black plus 5, white plus 5, cute plus 5, cost 50. I'm just going to check the... Red plus three, blue plus three. Nope, I'm gonna go for the Star Wand. Yep. Yes, let's buy it. Purchase Star Wand. Yeah. Access the equipment screen. It's fine. I am done shopping for now. Head back to Iris Academy. And let's equip the Star Wand. There we go. Okay, so that brings me to there. So let's check the diary. Actually, no, let's just go straight into next week. What should I do this week? We will do red, blue, red, blue. And hopefully that'll get me as far as I need to go, and then I'll do another class of green at the end. Excellent. Almost maxed out red. Okay, I'm not going to max out blue this week, unfortunately. I wake up suddenly in the middle of the night. I'm not sure why. I thought I heard something. Just then, the door to the room creaks open and Virginia slips inside. Virginia? <coughs> oh, you're awake. There's uh, something going on out there. Huh? I had to get up and pee, but when I was coming back, there was all these weird noises. Like what? I don't know, like someone decided to play floor hockey in the middle of the night, or a whole domino chain of folding chairs falling over. What's going on? I have no idea. I couldn't tell what it was coming from, and I didn't want to wander around alone all night trying to figure it out. I guess we should try and go back to sleep then. Probably. It's not so easy to get to sleep while wondering and worrying about what might be happening outside. We're getting up and ready for the day when someone knocks on the door. Just a minute! There's no rush. It's only me. Listen, there was a problem last night, and the staff are still busy dealing with it. Because of that, all classes for today are cancelled. We're just passing the news. What happened? I'm not sure. I heard someone tried to blow up the school. What? Or maybe it was a fire. I'm, I'm not sure. Are we in danger? No, no, there's nothing to worry about. The professors will take care of it. You could relax for the day, or you could study for your exam on Friday. There's an exam on Friday? Um, did I forget to tell you that? Yes. Sorry. Excuse me, I have more doors to knock on. I will see you later. Thanks for letting us know. Ellen and I go back into the room. I guess we have the day off. This is creepy. You didn't see anyone out last night, did you? No, but I didn't go very far. I was only down the hall. Who would want to blow up the school? That's just a rumour. There might not be what happened. Something big happened if they cancelled every class. Yeah. So with no class today, what should I do? Ah, I better study. Especially if there's an exam on Friday. In the afternoon, runners are sent round to summon us all to the gym. Hello. I'm sure you all have many questions and so do we. I will do my best to tell you what I can. Last night, there was a fire in Falcon Hall, targeted on a student bedroom while the occupants slept. We believe this fire was started deliberately. However, it was quickly detected and no one was injured. Unfortunately, we don't yet know who was responsible. We are questioning individuals at the moment, but if you have any information about these events, please speak to a teacher immediately. At the moment, we do not know if this was a prank that went wrong, or a deliberate attempt to injure one or more students, or worse. While we are investigating this, please stay safe. A fire in your sleep. You could die of smoke inhalation without even waking up. All your magical power is useless if you're not awake to use it. This is awful. As the student population empties into the hallway, Virginia grabs her arms. And I'm going to leave whatever she has to say for the next video, so thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.